Well, hello there. This is episode 12 of Video Game Pickups, starring Alpha Omega Sin. Say hello. Hello. Yes, it's the 12th episode, and I have a whole pile of motherfucking stuff here that I'd like to share with many of you out there. So it's a gigantic jumbled random collage of stuff like it normally is. I can't ever just stick to buying stuff for any one console because I like all my consoles. So anyway, enough jibber jabber. Let's start off with something that isn't actually a video game whatsoever. But when I found this, I just went fucking crazy. You have no idea. Does anybody remember this whatsoever? Hmm? What you do is press it down, suction cup will connect, Hopefully it'll actually stick, and it bounces. I don't know how well that translated. Let's try it one more time. There you go. It's Mario, Tanuki Mario, from Super Mario Bros. 3. This thing was in McDonald's Happy Meal toys, along with a bunch of other Mario toys. As a matter of fact, I think uh, the other one that I had when I was little was the uh, Goomba one. But I had this one, and I kept kicking myself over the years, because, you know, when you're little kids, they're just... They're McDonald's toys. You don't fucking care about them, and you don't ever think, I'm gonna keep this when I'm older. Well, I found this at a flea market that I went to recently. It was actually Rogers in Ohio, so if anybody's ever frequent, frequented that, uh, that flea market, then hell yeah, it fucking rocks. It's gigantic. But anyway, saw this there. Dude wanted a dollar. More than worth a dollar to me, so I was pretty happy. Yeah, it's, it's Mario, and it, it makes me very happy. So he'll be going up on my shelf with a whole bunch of other stuff. Now this, $2 for this, I was just like, how can I argue? And I was actually talking with uh, St. Magnus about this right before we, and uh, Yell Chaos actually, before we had started the Hate Bit podcast, we were just shooting the shit and everything, and I brought this up, which led to the entire discussion about the uh, LCD handheld games. But this is 1943. Now, 1943, which... It's actually made by Acclaim. Don't know how well you can see that. There you go. Acclaim! Uh, there's no batteries in it right now because it's one of those things, when you have batteries inside of it, it stays on all the time. I'm probably going to do a review of this because, actually, you know, it's really fun. Despite the fact that it's a prehistoric handheld, you know, LCD game and everything, that's all fine and good. Uh, what year is this from? 89. It's actually the same exact year that little Mario toy I showed you. So 1989. And 1943, if you're not aware, if you've ever seen 1942 or 1943, uh, they're, they're top-down vertical shooters where you're just flying along in a ship and you shoot down airplanes and battleships and things like that. You get power-ups and you start fucking up everything and, you know, you get your bosses and whatnot. And uh, it's it's just a lot of fun. Well, this is pretty much that same exact thing. You're down in the corner here, and you just avoid incoming fire and whatnot. But a lot of fun. And for two dollars, I was like, hell yeah, this thing rocks. So yeah, I, I could not pass that up whatsoever. I was just like, dude, that's that's awesome. And the dude who sold it to me was a big time metalhead, and it was cool. He had a a, a big bin of uh, metal vinyl. My brother collects vinyl, so he was there with me, and he was like, fuck yeah, going through all the stuff. He bought a couple things, so it was neat. Let's see, ooh. Now this, I've been needing this for a very, very long time and just never found one for a decent price, but I did recently, and it's a Sega CD backup RAM cart. Glare, go away, and it's like, no, fuck you, I'm going to stay right there. But regardless, as you can see, is in fact the entire thing. Box is a little beat up and dinged up, but I didn't really care because I just wanted the cart. It's it's actually plugged in right now to the Sega CDX, so the box just has the instructions and everything with it. But this thing, essentially, it's a memory card for your Sega CD. And if you have a decent collection of Sega CD games, it's a no-brainer to get one of them. It's very, very essential. I assure you 100% you will be extremely satisfied with having one. So uh, get one because, yeah. And 16 times the memory of Sega CD system lets you save multiple games. Fuck yeah, because I hate deleting stuff. So, yeah, whatever. It, it was a damn, damn fine deal. Next up, we'll complete my Phoenix Wright game collection. Applause! Yay! Phoenix Wright fucking rocks! In every single way. I'm sorry, but it's just like... OBJECTION! You see that? OBJECTION, motherfuckers. You will shut the fuck up. Are you talking when Phoenix Wright... Oh, you will not talk when Phoenix Wright is talking. But anyway. And also, where's Miles Edgeworth too? Hmm? Or how about this? Where in the bloody hell 
is Phoenix Wright, cross Professor Layton. You know, one of the games for the 3DS I've been wanting? Damn you. Such good crossover. Probably won't make its way here. Damn shame. But anyway, this completes my collection. It is... Trials and Tribulations. Battle for Justice! Full of Phoenix's rise to fame as a seasoned defense attorney. Past and present collide as he prepares to face off with the mysterious prosecutor, Godot. Godot? 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 Whatever. Doesn't matter. I, this is the one that I have not played. The only one I have not played. So I'm pretty damn excited about this. I'll be popping this in my DSi XL and playing the living shit out of it. Uh, yeah, just really happy with this. It, it, it's more Phoenix Wright goodness. I've read about this. I've seen video game footage. So it's more of the same, which is what I wanted. Just continue the story. Fucking love it. I just want to go into the courtroom and absolutely put the motherfucking smackdown on bitches. So yes. Fantastic. Capcom, seriously, start making console ports of these. Maybe Phoenix Wright Collection for the 3DS, huh? Uh, anybody out there want that? You? Somebody's raising their damn hand. I, I'm certain of this. Now, this, I, I'd actually done a, a little status update on my Alpha Omega Zoom Facebook page. Uh, so if you you frequent that whatsoever, then you probably saw this. I, I went to Kmart today, actually, and uh, I was there just for shits and giggles. I'd, um, I'd take my data for a late Father's Day gift, and uh, I was just like, oh, I'll stop by Kmart and everything for the fuck of it, because I was looking for something specific they didn't have. It stopped in our game section, and... Uh, they had a bunch of games for, like, dirt-ass cheap, one of which was Brutal Legend. Two dollars. Two dollars for Brutal Legend for PS3. I didn't pick that up because I already have it for PS3, but still, it's just like, holy shit. But this little collage of games here, all five dollars pop. Despite the fact what you see on a sticker, I did not pay that because it was inside, you know, those plastic overshell cases that they'll put the games inside of. You know, four ninety-nine on all of them. So, first one is Nostalgia for Nintendo DS. Now, this right here, I've wanted to get my hands on this game for quite some time, based purely off the fact that a lot of people compared this to Skies of Arcadia. So I thought, wow, anything that can be compared to Skies of Arcadia gets a big thumbs up from me. So, yeah, doesn't look too bad. Uh, I notice on the back, it's like Battle in the Sky or in Dungeons Below, Explore the World. Same exact thing, so I can kind of see where they're going with the entire premise of Skies of Arcadia, except for you are not badass fucking airship pirates and stuff. Vice and crew. Yeah, but anyway, Nostalgia looks like it could be a pretty good game. Whenever I get the extra time after I'm done going through the other bevy of games I have, I'm going to be popping this in and giving it a whirl. So hopefully it turns out to be pretty good. If any of you like it, you can comment. But yeah. Anywho, moving on to the other $5 game. This one actually does have the $5 sticker on it. And that's Advance Wars Days of Ruin. Quit being shiny, you damn thing. It's all because of cellophane, so I do apologize. But Advance Wars Days of Ruin, now this had gotten tons and tons of really good reviews. I like the original Advance Wars a whole lot, and I like Dual Strike on the DS. I got that. That was a launch game, I believe, uh, Dual Strike. But I like that one a whole lot. I just never gotten around to being able to check this out. Uh, I didn't even download it ROM. I was like, oh, I'll check it out. I never got around to it. But when there's a $5 price tag slapped on a game that everybody I know that's played it said nothing but good things about it and said it was the best one in the series, it's like, okay. I have to get that. So this was a no-brainer for me. So yeah, get my fucking tactical RPG-ness on. So fuck yeah. Let's see, uh, there's one more. It's actually sitting at the bottom though. Do -do 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 -do. Again, doesn't say five dollars, but it, it was, and this made me so damn happy because I was going to buy it multiple times, but every time that I saw it, there was something else there that I ended up buying instead. I played the game a couple times, but hot damn. It's motherfucking sin and punishment. And some of the most brutal fucking cover art ever. I seriously would put this on my list of favorite cover art. One day I ought to make a video about that. Just my favorite video game cover art. I've ripped on video game cover art quite a few times. But this is uh, this is up there on the list. That I assure you. Uh, there goes the back. One funny thing is uh, this monster boss right here. If you look. Doesn't he look like Bane? Like, I, I think that he looks like Bane, legitimately, now that the camera's uh, autofocused and everything, but he looks like Bane when I see it. Um, if anybody's wondering about the gameplay, if you saw on the uh, Virtual Console for the Wii, you can download the original Sin and Punishment for Nintendo 64. It never came here to the States, unfortunately, but you can always import it, but importing it's going to cost you a lot of change, so uh, you, might, you might not want to do that. But uh, anyway... Um, this, essentially, it's just really fast-paced game. Kind of like an on-rail shooter, but imagine it on tons of speed. I mean, like, tons and tons and tons and tons. And not only is it on speed, but it's on fast-forward. Everything that pops up on screen, you're just shooting living shit and dodging stuff. So it's kind of like a shoot-em-up 
in an on-rail shooter come together, they bump uglies, and it's like, pop out the baby. So, yeah, you have Sin and Punishment. A game that I think the Nintendo should have really went out of their way to go and advertise the living shit out of, because this right here is a series I want to see them do more with, uh, especially with the Wii U. Holding the camera like this, this is how you could dodge and everything, and you're looking through where you're going to be shooting at. I think that could be extremely fucking killer. So hopefully it lives on. Uh, I don't know how well the series had sold, or at least this did. But um, fantastic game. Pick it up. It is awesome as hell. Seriously, just absolutely fucking brutal. You will like it. I assure you 100% it gets my seal of approval. And if you have played it, you know, tell everybody, it fucking rocks. Now then. This was another one of the things that I got from the flea market. Uh, one thing that I haven't really gotten to show anybody whatsoever, at least here on YouTube, uh, the shelf that I have this sitting on, I have a lot of my big box games sitting way up there, and I have all the box Time Crisis games. I have Time Crisis 1, Time Crisis 2, Time Crisis 3, Time Crisis 4, but I was always missing one, and I finally got my hands on it, and that was Time Crisis, Crisis Zone. This game, which I played the shit out of this in the arcades. Yes, arcades! Remember those things? Uh, but every time I found it in the arcades, this game... <laughs> it's hard to play. I'll, I'll just... Quick story about it. When you go up to the machine, okay, the guns that are sitting there, they have a vibration feature. I shit you not, I could never beat the game in the arcade because it vibrated so much, like... You know, you're trying to maintain a grip on it, and my forearm just felt like mush after a while. I could not maintain a grip. So, you know, your trigger finger couldn't go like this anymore, because, you know, all your tendons and everything are in there. And, uh, it fucking sucked, because I was eventually just pulling my arm going like this. I was just like, God help me, please, somebody, just use your finger, I'll just aim! It'll be fucking co-op in arcade mode. But, uh, yeah. This right here, the dude was awesome as hell. Gave it to me for $8. This bitch is complete, man. Absolutely complete. If you're ever wondering what it looks like on the inside. Here goes the game. Complete. Uh, there's that. It's got the gun and everything, naturally. So I've got I've got a lot of Gun Con 1s and Gun Con 2s. But uh, I, I couldn't pass it up for that amount. I, it's just like $8. And it goes for more than that. At least like when you're trying to find a complete in the box and whatnot. So yeah, the box, it's not an absolutely gem mint condition. You know, there's a couple of dings and everything on it. You know, turn it right side up so you can actually see the title correctly. <laughs> Namco. There, you can see the back of it. But extremely good game. I mean, if you're a fan of Time Crisis games, I'd say the only one that I wasn't a really big fan of was uh, Time Crisis 4. That one's the only one I was like, eh. But every other one I like a whole bunch. This one is very, very good. Check it out. If you played in the arcade, you will know exactly what I mean about it. Just like taking a fucking absolute pounding on your forearms. It's just rough stuff. But this 8 bucks, absolutely worth it. Was not going to be passing up on that. Don't want that to fall. That'll go down there. Anyway, this is a game that I've been beating myself up. Ha, that's a pun, actually, because it is a beat-em-up. I've been beating myself up for not ever having. I know a couple people that have it, and I have tried it out, but oh man. God Hand. It's motherfucking God Hand. Every time I saw this game, I shit you not, it was always really, really expensive, so there it is. God Hand. It's fucking awesome. Uh, pretty cool story. It is, it, it's Fist of North Star, basically, uh, but it is extremely badass game. You know, when it comes to beat-em-ups, beat-em-ups are few and far between nowadays, so finding a very good one. This is one of those titles that's like Capcom. This, you know, you're doing a lot of things right on PS2. I shit you not, and this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mwah. Seriously, uh, we need more God Hand. Just, just make it happen. Make it happen, Cap'n. But, uh, yeah, extremely good, and by Clover Studios, if you're not aware, there's a shit. Uh, they put out Okami. So, God Hand? Okami? Uh, back-to-back -back awesome games? I think so. But, yeah, God Hand, if you're a beat -em up fan and an enthusiast in any kind of way, give this a playthrough. We'll like it. And if you don't, you're crazy. Loco. Now... This, I've had quite a few people ask me, uh, sitting over there, uh, and I'll probably show that later. I have a, um, a lollipop chainsaw a cardboard cutout, which I got walking into this one store, and uh, people are always asking, how is the game? Well, I do have the game, in fact. There it is, lollipop chainsaw. 
Now, this is another game by Suda51. So, if you're a fan of Suda51 games, I assure you 100% you are going to like this. I understand that the reviews for it are very iffy. I don't really give two fucks about reviews, to be honest. I will pick up a game, whether it gets good reviews or bad reviews, because I want to play it for myself. And this is one of those games that I actually pre-ordered and was interested in, so I knew I was going to like it no matter what. It is good. Uh, the only downside is the combat could be a little bit tighter and a little more fluid. Other than that, it's fucking awesome. It really is. The soundtrack, pretty awesome. The art style, you know, Suda 51's all about having, like, a certain kind of art style and does interesting things as far as, like, design-wise goes. And it shows on this. Um, trying to think what else. The story's amusing as shit. It really is. It, it's made me laugh out loud quite a few times. So it, it's like, oh, lol, skis. But, you know, I do like it a lot. I know that it is going to get some flack from people, but if you play it for what it is, a game that's not meant to be taken very seriously, it's just a hack and slash game with a bunch of fucking zombies and you're a big titty cheerleader and she has the severed head of her boyfriend, who I assure you 100% is probably the funniest fucking asset to the entire game, just because the poor guy's a severed head. That sucks. That sucks so bad. Even if your your face is going to be bouncing off a hot chick's ass all day, it sucks, because you have no ding-dong. So, yeah. But Lollipop Chainsaw, really good game. I'm enjoying it a whole bunch. So, at the very least, check it out, or wait till it drops on price if you're just like, I can really trust you on that. So, you know, whatever. Again, that's fine. It's all opinions at the end of the day. Now, these three I got at a flea market, or not flea market, a thrift store, uh, that I just found the other day, and I was pretty happy because they had an entire glass case of video games. I just ran over to it. I was like, oh, and all their games were dirt fucking cheap. Now, the first one I was meaning to pick up for quite a while as soon as I found out about it because I didn't know it existed because I'm a fan of the NES original, and that's Blaster Master. Now, oh, I'm sorry, Blaster Master or Blasting Again. That's got one entire title. So, Blaster Master, you drive around in a car or you run around on foot blasting stuff. It's pretty much what the title suggests. There's enemies flying around, there's enemies running around, there's big-ass fucking bosses and stuff, and you just shoot everything. You get a special, and it charges up after a while, and you unleash that and whatnot. It's good. It really is. I've had a lot of fun with this. I sat down and was playing it uh, almost a week ago, I think. I had a blast playing it. <laughs> again, another pun. I had a blast playing Blaster Master. Blasting again! But no, really awesome. I do. I like a whole lot. You should check this out. And if you can, if you were like, ah, the game's cheap. It's cheap as fuck. It does not cost nearly that much. And if you're like, Eh, go download a fucking ROM! Seriously, play this game, check it out, and if you have not played the NES original, you should, because Blaster Master is a lot of fun, and I like it a lot. So, yeah, it's Blaster Master. Blasting again! Team Rocket's blasting off again! Ding! So, yeah, I had to include that. Now, this game... Some people were like, you didn't play that when it came out? And I'm like, yes, I did not. And I was always meaning to, because I heard tons of good things about it, but I just never got my hands on it. Digimon World, the original Digimon World. $1.99, can't really beat that. Blaster Master was only $0.99, cents. like, check that out. Where's the price? There you go, yeah. $0.99, cents. Not, too, not too shabby. But, uh, yeah, Digimon World been mean to get the game for a while. Just n never got my hands on it, which is kind of weird because... And when it came to the PS1, I was like an RPG connoisseur, just had them all, played them all, beat the fuck out of all of them. This one, the ones that was elusive for me and just never got my hands on it. I never found it for the right price. $1.99 is most definitely the right price. Got a little crack in the case, but I can easily repair that. Just replace it. But anyway, fans of Digimon, you'll be like, fuck yeah! People that hate Digimon will be like, why the fuck do you have that? Me, I'm, I'm happy to, at uh, the very least, give this a whirl. So, yeah. Digimon, fuck yeah! Now this one, I can admit, I know next to nothing about. Uh, I just remembered that I had a friend that liked the game. So, I was like, again, 99 cents. It's Blast Radius. And it's Pygnosis who put the game out which they put out a lot of really good stuff. As a matter of fact, right on the front, uh, one of their best games, tells you right there that they put out, is Colony Wars. And this is uh, another game where you're flying around in what appears to be a spaceship, just blowing the living fuck out of things. Not quite literally in the prostitute type of manner, but, you know, with your ship and guns and missiles and whatnot. But yeah, it looks like it'd be pretty cool. 
Battle 37 types of highly intelligent enemy crafts including bounty hunters, crime spaceships, and military ships. But another thing about this that's pretty cool is that it's got a versus mode, and that ha that intrigued me quite a bit. Anytime that there's like any kind of like, you know, um, as a matter of fact, link cables, yeah, you, you actually got that. But anytime that there's like versus co-op or you know system link on PS1, it, it automatically intrigues me because it, it wasn't like a super common thing back in the day, other than with like fighting games, you know, and uh, puzzle games. But yeah, pretty cool stuff. I'm looking forward to playing it at some point. Gotta find the time. Now this is a bevy of Wii games. The main reason why I haven't been playing my Wii all that much lately, <laughs> Wii, is uh, I, I lent it to a friend, so I haven't been able to really, you know, get into any of the games. And there's only one of them that I'm playing at the moment. Uh, the first one, just, I have no clue why I didn't pick it up anytime soon, uh, but I was just like, what the fuck? Why can't I find it for cheap? Finally found it for dirt ass cheap. Muramasa, the demon blade. This right here is another, another masterpiece by Vanillaware. If you're unaware of Vanillaware, they put out things like Odin Sphere. They put out uh, Grim Grimoire. And this. Well, I had to get my hands on this. I, I have played it before, and it's just side-scrolling hack and slash. One of the most beautiful looking games you'll ever play. But the thing is, that's what Vanillaware does. I swear, they're just like... 2D fucking masters. When it comes to just art in general, they, they've got it down pat. You know, it's really just like looking at the most awesome anime and you're controlling it. It's so fucking cool. But yeah, how to get my hands on it. If you own a Nintendo Wii, you have not played this at all. You owe it to yourself because it is really cheap. Online, I think it's like eight dollars or some shit, you can go on Amazon and check it out, but, you know, it, it's very, very cheap, very affordable, and very fun, and as a matter of fact, brand new, it's very cheap. Pick it up new if you can, just so that they can see, oh, wow, the game's actually still selling, even after all this time. It fucking deserves the sales, because it's a very good game, but, uh, yeah, I cannot go and tell you enough how awesome it is. So, Muramasa fucking rocks. Now, this one was showed off so many years ago, and I was always meaning to get my hands on it, but again, me being cheap bastard that I am, just never got my hands on it. But uh, I, I traded some old computer parts that I didn't really need to uh, pawn shop, and the pawn shop had Fragile Dreams! Fuck yeah! Exceed, I heart you. So, this game right here, I, I remember I was seeing the previews for it, and look, it, it's kind of cool, main character, he's got a little golf cup there, his own little pixel fucker! Yeah, but um, I remember I had seen screenshots of this game, and I automatically assumed that it was an RPG. But it's it's not like a traditional style RPG. It's kind of interesting because it's I'm trying to find the best way to describe it because it's it is a relatively unique game. Um, in a way, it kind of reminds me of uh, a survival horror game. It's not so much like you know it's gory and whatnot, but like it's it's kind of got that mood. You know what I mean? And it reminds me of, like, uh, Alone in the Dark, a uh, new nightmare on PS1. You got the flashlight moving around. I know it's not the best example, but that's the first thing that, for whatever reason, popped in my mind. And you're just running around, and you're, you're absolutely alone. Like, there's nobody else around except for the shit that you kill. When you kill it, you know, it's hack and slash RPG style. You know, hit shit, numbers pop up and whatnot. But the art style is also really badass. If you see it, visually, this is one of the most pleasing games. I know that I just got done saying that about Muramasa, but this is like back-to-back, -back, really awesome-looking games. I know that there's tons of people out there that'll go and discount, you know, the Wii's graphical prowess, which is understandable because it is underpowered by comparison. But when people tapped into the potential of the system, they were conjuring up stuff like this, which was fucking fantastic. It made me really happy. So, really cool game, really unique, and you should check it out because it deserves more love. It's a really great game, seriously. Now this is not such a great game, but it's one of those games, it's not that good, but I like it anyway. And, well, it helps that it's a survival horror game. Oh, oh I, I sense a bias. Survival horror fan here. The Calling. The Calling... <laughs> okay, now, The Calling I had wanted to get for a while, despite the fact that I'd watched gameplay footage of it, and I actually laughed, but it, again, I picked up really bad survival horror games and enjoyed them a whole bunch. Countdown Vampires, I'm looking at you. But uh, this game, it, it's cheesy, and that's one of the reasons why I like it. Uh, 
The graphics in it are not that good. The control in it is very iffy at times. Like, for instance, to control the game, you have your Wii remote and your nunchuck. Your nunchuck is going to move you about and everything. So the Wii remote itself, this is how you're looking around. So left, right, up, down, and, you know, center is obviously going to look straight ahead. The downside to it, though, is it acts like there's only five points of interest. So top, <laughs> bottom, and left and right. If you just, like, edge the controller over just a little bit, it, like, snaps the place, like, where it's going to go, and then you're turning, like, a whole lot more than you're meaning to, and it makes moving around really cumbersome and frustrating. Um, and it's kind of got that Fatal Frame vibe going with it, because you're dealing with a lot of, you know, ghosts and other apparitions that just jump up out of nowhere. And little little girl on the front kind of reminds me of some shit out of the grudge, except for she's not meowing like that little boy does. That's so fucking stupid. Seriously, anybody see that movie? Because every time that happened, I was just like... Most people might find that cute. Like, meow! And it's like, oh, look, he's a kitty. He's like a little furry or some shit. Except for he doesn't have the suit. Eh, whatever. But, um... Oh, and he's got too much makeup on. <laughs> but, it, you know, this game is... it. Like, here. I'll, I'll show you, uh... Right, right there, on the corner. If you can see right there, there is a dude with a bunch of hands coming up around him. I remember when this happened, and the the facial animations for it were just so laughably bad. I, I like, I saw the hands, and I was like, uh oh, it's a Ghostbusters orgy. Better watch out. Where's that pinky going? Up your cornhole. But I was just like, dude, I'll still play it anyway. You know, you interact with the environment. You know, you. You have to go and grab a drawer and pull on it so the drawer comes out and everything. And you have to go and open doors like this. And that's kind of cool because it's utilizing the potential of the Wii Remote in the exact way that it's meant to. But the downside is that the control is kind of shit. So you're you're fighting with it to do all those things. And it sounds like I'm bashing the shit out of the game. But it's... I know that some of you out there have played a game that wasn't that great. And it wasn't perfect. But you still enjoyed it regardless. That's, that's this game here. So pick it up. It's getting harder to find, so you may want to grab your uh, copy while you still can before it ends up going online for a whole shit ton of money. And this <clears throat> is the last game that I'll be showing off in this. Um, I, I picked up a Toys R Us. It was in the bargain bin for nine bucks. I was just like, all right. Trauma Team! Me being a big-ass fan of the Trauma Center games on the DS, I was meaning to pick this up. And that's because this one is extremely different from the rest of them. The main reason is because, so firstly, you're, you're not just one individual, you're a group of individuals, each with their own special techniques. So, you know, you don't just have all of your tools readily available to you, it's you're going into specific types of procedures and that person has all these different abilities that they can go and use. It's really, really kick-ass. It is. Uh, graphically, it looks really nice. Got a kick-ass art style. I swear that the person that did, like, the Cowboy Bebop and uh, Samurai Champloo art did this. Because he looks like Spike fucking Spiegel. I mean, look at him. Like, it, it, it just... And it, it just looks like it, I swear. I'm pretty sure. Somebody can probably confirm that. That or they just took a lot of, of fucking consideration of... Yeah, I, I like that a lot. I... I think I'm going to take that art style and apply it here. But uh, anyway, Atlas, again, knocked out of the park. Uh, control is really, really awesome. It, since there's a lot more variety to everything that you do in each procedure, by comparison to the other Trauma Center games, this doesn't seem, you know, as boring by comparison. Because I understand that some people are just like, oh, it's this again. Okay, doing the same things over and over again, except for now it's timed or something like that. But, I, you know, I still enjoy them, but some people would complain about that. Well, this will offer you a ton of variety that you aren't going to get nearly as bored. So, there, you have tons of gameplay options with this. Plus, it's two players, so another person can play the game with you, and that kicks ass. So, yeah, that's Trauma Team for the Nintendo Wii. That's a whole fuck ton of games. Like, damn! Even though the, the couple of them weren't, you know, like little Mario here. Fuck yeah, Mario, Mario, Mario. I can't wait for the uh, new Super Mario Brothers on Wii U and 3DS. It's gonna fucking rock. But anyway, so this was episode 12. Can you believe it? 12 fucking episodes? Damn, and there'll be many more to come. I assure you 100%. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you have any thoughts about any games that I had showed off or, you know, just anything in general, there's a comment box down below. You're like, 
send. But, uh, yeah. So, that's it. I hope you enjoyed all this random stuff that I showed off. I thank you for fucking checking it out. So, gonna conclude this. Like always, nerds, nerdettes, and gamers, game the fuck on. Alrighty, now here's a bonus for anybody that actually sits through to the very end of these videos. Now, out of everything that I showed off here, I've had lots of people go and say, we would love to see you do Let's Plays. And I decided that I would go and fuck around and actually set my video camera up to record the TV screen and everything. And it came out, like, the quality was really good. It picked up my voice and everything on TV really well. So I thought, why not do this? For my very first Let's Play video, I'm going to let you all choose exactly which game it is. So, out of everything in this video that I just showed off, what is the game that you want to see me play the most? So go ahead and comment. You know, after a while, I'll go through all the comments and whatever one everybody seems to like the idea of me playing the most, that's what I'm going to do a Let's Play of at some point, uh, maybe next week. So, yeah, go ahead. Uh, all, all those games, you know, Trauma Team, The Fragile, Muramasa Demon Blade, God Hand, uh, Lollipop Chainsaw. There's a whole bunch. They're all still sitting down there. I'm trying to look at them all. I'm like, uh... Uh, it might be a little bit harder with the DS games, honestly, because they're handheld, but uh, try to go with the console games. It's a lot easier because I can record that without any kind of problems or anything. But anyway, so, yeah, it's all up to you, the fans, the nerds and nerdettes. You go and make your choice and all that. Unless you don't give two shits about a Let's Play, so then you can be like, the fuck would I even care about that for? But uh, anyway, so, again, thank you, and I'll see you soon. Later! <laughs>